Welcome to our Ash Wednesday reading and homily. Our reading is from the Gospel of St. John, chapter 8, reading from verse 1 to 11. While Jesus went to the Mount of Olives, early in the morning he came again to the temple. All the people came to him, and he sat down and began to teach them. The scribes and the Pharisees brought a woman who had been caught in adultery, and making her stand before all of them, they said to him, Teacher, this woman was caught in the very act of committing adultery. Now in the law, Moses commanded us to stone such women. Now what do you say? They said this to test him, so that they might have some charge to bring against him. Jesus bent down and wrote with his finger on the ground. When they kept on questioning him, he straightened up and said to them, Let anyone among you who is without sin be the first to throw a stone at her. And once again he bent down and wrote on the ground. When they heard it, they went away one by one, beginning with the elders. And Jesus was left alone with a woman standing before him. Jesus straightened up and said to her, Woman, where are they? Has no one condemned you? She said, No one, sir. And Jesus said, Neither do I condemn you. Go your way. And from now on, do not sin again. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Perhaps you just pray with me before I continue. Father, we thank you for your word that brings life. And as we open up that word now, Lord, may your people hear you and you alone. May they hear their message of goodness and joy. What you want them to hear today, because we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. I'd like you to close your eyes, if you will, and join me on a journey through your imagination. Perhaps close your eyes to immerse yourself more fully in the imagination. You are the woman caught in adultery, right in the middle of the act. The shame of it is unending as the moral police keep insulting you and calling you filthy names. And you know what's going to happen as the law has been taught to you and to everyone from childhood. You are going to die by being stoned to death by anyone. And you're standing there just clutching the cloak, the only sheet you had to put around yourself. Standing there with everybody else looking at you with eyes of reproach, eyes of indignation, eyes of disgust. If only, if only you could turn the clock back if only. You don't know what came over you. Why you agreed to the liaison. And now, your life is over. You know you're never going to see your children again. Never going to hold them to see them grow up. Never going to see your parents and family again. And you know how much you've let them down. And they're going to suffer too because others will despise them, cut them off socially. And it's your fault. But you say to yourself as you're pushed here and there, where are they taking me now? 
Why don't they just get on with it and put me out of my misery, out of my shame? Well, you may open your eyes again now and thank you for indulging me and reliving the woman's situation with me through your imagination. Did you find it hard to relate to or imagine yourself in that woman's position? Maybe you say to yourself that you would never have been guilty of what she did. Think again. Jesus said, you have heard that it was said, you shall not commit adultery. But I say to you that everyone who looks at a woman with lust has already committed adultery with her in his heart. Now, there is no requirement to somehow lose the drives and appetites that we were born with, nor should there be any guilt for having them. On the contrary, it's a matter of the commitment of the will, the orientation of the heart that Jesus is discussing. It's the covetous look that is forbidden, not lust or desire itself. In other words, the full sense of what Jesus is saying is this. But I tell you that anyone who looks at a woman or man covetously has already committed adultery with them in their heart. Thou shalt not covet. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not bear false witness. Have you never done something that you know to be wrong? Or as Jesus said to his questioners, is there anyone without sin? Have you never done anything that you were ashamed of in the cold light of day and conscience? Maybe an addiction to pornography an addiction to sex, an addiction to drink, to drugs, to power, to bullying. Maybe it's your propensity to be completely self-centered, selfish, seeking only your own advantage. I guess only you know the sins of commission and omission that you are guilty of. Happily, these days, your sins are in the main, not going to lead to your being stoned to death. However, after death, there is still a warning to us as Christians and non-Christians not to carry on sinning in our lives. That there will be a day of reckoning. St. Paul puts it this way in 1 Corinthians chapter 6. This is what some of you used to be. That is immoral. But you were washed. You were sanctified. You were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and in the spirit of our God. In other words, we cannot keep on doing what we used to do. You Me, we cannot keep on doing what we used to do. Do you not know that wrongdoers will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived. Fornicators, idolaters, adulterers, male prostitutes, sodomites, thieves, the greedy, drunkards, revilers, robbers, none of these will inherit the kingdom of God. Yet you may as a believer or a non-believer, like the woman caught in adultery, still be struggling with shame and guilt in your life. Perhaps from ongoing sin. Perhaps from patterns of behavior you can't shake off. If that's you, our gospel reading has good news for, for you today. Good news contained in those five words from Jesus. Neither do I condemn you. They're wonderful. 
awesome. The problem is most of us have heard those words so many times, especially if we're cradle Christians, that they don't hit us with the force they should. Perhaps it's only those who've really hit rock bottom in life, lost wife, lost husband, lost job, home, lost everything because of addiction, because of sin, uncontrolled sin in their lives, who can really savor those words, neither do I condemn you. Whatever you've done, however reprehensible, however heinous, however blameworthy and disgusting, Jesus says these words, which must be like suddenly finding water in a desert. Neither do I condemn you. Those words of acceptance and forgiveness by Jesus are, of course, followed by an injunction not to carry on in the way you used to. Go your way, he said to the woman, and from now on do not sin again. But to every sinner full of guilt and shame, the words of Jesus are literally a get-out-of-jail deliverance. No wonder those who are forgiven most perhaps love the most. Such a burden is lifted off our shoulders when we receive the healing of forgiveness by Jesus. That the only emotions possible are relief, peace, and perhaps tears of joy. So I invite you this Lent to remember and give thanks and praise to God for what he's done for you in your life. Perhaps there was a lack of purpose and emptiness to your life. Perhaps you lived solely for yourself and without any thought for the feelings and well-being of others. Perhaps you were gripped by addictions and other patterns of sins. When you received Christ, all this became history. You knew God accepted you just as you were and forgave you and welcomed you into his family. I'd like to suggest that this Lent be a time of joyous thanksgiving daily for all God has done for you. Don't put on a hair shirt like we normally do. Let each day be a day a time of joyous thanksgiving daily for all God has done for you. That he lifted the shame and burden of our previous lives from us and has called us to share in his peace, his joy, and his love. As Paul says at the end of 1 Corinthians chapter 1, consider your own call, brothers and sisters, not many of you were wise by human standards. Not many were powerful. Not many were of noble birth. But God chose what is foolish in the world to shame the wise. God chose what is weak in the world to shame the strong. God chose what is low and despised in the world, things that are not, to reduce to nothing things that are so that no one might boast in the presence of God. He is the source of your life in Christ Jesus, who became for us wisdom for God, from God, and righteousness, and sanctification, and redemption. In order that, as it is written, let the one who boasts, boast in the Lord. Let's pray. Abba, Father, thank you. Thank you for the joy that comes from your lack of condemnation, your acceptance of us, your forgiveness of our sinful natures. Thank you that when we were still sinners, Jesus chose to die for us, chose to to come to earth for us, to bring reconciliation between our Father and ourselves. 
So today, Lord, as we mark the beginning of Lent, help us through your Spirit to remember daily what you have done for us. Bring to our minds, our memories, the things that you have forgiven us and your unconditional acceptance of us through your lack of condemnation. We ask this in Jesus Christ's name. Amen.